Hey, hello and welcome to this advanced tutorial by Flowmotion. So today we will have a deeper look into 3D scenes, 3D animation and 3D compositing. All within After Effects. And yes, I understand that all those spiders from my teaser may trigger some of you. So for the sake of this tutorial, we will use something more user-friendly. Okay, but before we deal with any 3D objects, let's at first set everything up the way we want it. Because this tutorial will be all about workflows and best practices. Here is my footage. And I have shot this with a 24mm lens. So let us also create a 24mm camera. And let's try to reconstruct our scene in 3D, because this will at first help us setting everything up in the best way and second it will help us align our 3D assets later and third this will also be our shadow catchers later on. So it really makes sense to nail this. I'm going to create one layer for the table. Well, and I also call it table and try to align it as good as I can with the footage. No, no, yes. Yes, I said we want to do it exact and not eyeball it. So when I shot this, I had the camera completely straight, which means that our horizon is exactly in the middle of the frame. And if you have not checked that while recording, you can simply draw some vanishing lines as little helpers on your footage. And wherever they are crossing, there's your horizon. As mine is in the middle, everything flat in the scene should not be rotated at all. So I'm not rotating my layer, but just move it down. And as the table is standing directly next to the wall, we can also duplicate the solid and simply rotate it 90 degrees and we have our wall. Perfect. But now let's search for a nice 3D model for our scene. I got mine from Sketchfab, but there are many sources where you can find everything you need and want on the internet. I searched for something animated and something that is downloadable. As format, I choose GLB and once downloaded, I simply import it and drag it into the scene. This will open up a window with some settings for your model. For example, the scaling. Here it makes sense to click on make com size to bring it in the right ballpark to get started. As some 3D assets from different 3D programs seems to have very different scaling properties. And this will set it to 100% in your comp. You can also choose if scaling the object will affect its position or not. And in the advanced tab, you can also change the axis, for example, if your model comes in flipped or upside down. And no worries, you can always come back to this window by selecting the layer and then go to layer, model settings. Okay. And I wanted to import a model that has a walk cycle baked in. Down here, you will find the animation options and you also directly see the length of all those animations in brackets behind them. Great. And this is the first workflow tip that I have for you. Because if I add this to the scene, it only does one cycle and then disappears. <laughs> Not what we want. We can help ourselves by adding a loop expression to the layer, which will loop it but therefore we need keyframes. Nothing easier than that. Right click on the layer, time, enable time remapping and boom, we have keyframes for the time. Now just hold down alt while clicking on the stopwatch for the time remap because this allows us to add an expression to this. And of course we want to loop it. So let's type in loop and After Effects will suggest some ideas for us. Great. I want this to loop out, meaning once the clip has ended, it should start again from the beginning and so on and so on and so on. Perfect. Just hit return and we can adjust the layer length to whatever we want. Oh, and we may also need a trade mill now. Okay, so far so good, but let's actually start with some compositing tips and tricks. So let's import a new 3D object so we have some more movement. Okay, for the alignment, we enable our table solid because now we can pretty easily see where our objects interact and where to place them. Once we are happy, let's add some shadows. 
And for those we need a light. And the only one that is currently casting a shadow is an environment light. And this already starts to look way better. If you cannot see any shadow, that could be because of the casting box size. This pink box defines the area for that. Every 3D object that sits within this box will cast a shadow. And if you are not sure about this, you can simply hit the Fit to Scene button. Also in here you can define the resolution of your shadow. But double will really slow everything down a lot, so I recommend only changing that for the final render. By default, the environment light is a single light source and you can see that by rotating it. And hey, what a coincidence that I also had a single light source for my shot. So let's just rotate it in the right position and here we go. But you could also add an HDRI image to your scene and select it in here. And in this way that will be used for the lighting as well as for the reflections. And if you want to learn more about this, I have made a tutorial about this Iron Man helmet and in that I'm going to show you how to create an HDRI of your own environment so that in this case my studio is reflecting in the helmet. And while we set up the light, let's also enable our wall layer because now we are casting shadows, but on the layer and not on the footage. Hmm. But that's an easy fix. Let's go to the material options of our layers and set them to accept shadows only. And now we can also tint them. We are getting somewhere. But when we take a look at our footage and analyze it, we see that the person who filmed it made sure that two tricky things are happening. First, we have a lot of reflections in the table. And second, the reflecting surface has a lot of texture. So only mirroring the footage will look fake. Hmm. Well, but let's indeed start with the mirroring and then work our way to the finish line afterwards. So let us just copy the 3D object, rotate it 180 degrees, and well, also we need to flip it horizontally, which we can do by simply adding a minus to the first scaling value. Looks strange. We need to lower the opacity. But when doing so on a 3D layer, that does not give us the result we want. Hmm. So we have two options. Cheating trick and an expert trick. So to cheat our way to a nice result, we could simply place the footage in between the two 3D objects and play with its opacity. Ta-da! Looks okay-ish, but we are also limited with this result. So let's do it the expert way. Let's create a reflection comp that we can then use for more compositing tricks. For that, we need to duplicate the light and camera because we need a pre-comp with the reflecting 3D object as well as the camera and light so it looks exactly the same as in our main comp. But wait, wait, a super cool trick here. Let's select both of them, light and camera, and go to edit, copy with properties, and paste them. Because now the copies are linked to the original camera and to the light. So we can adjust everything in here and it will also adjust in the pre-comp. Now we can play with the opacity of the layer but what really sells this is the reflection strength and blur according to the texture of the table. So let me give you an example here. If I place this text here and want to make it look like it's a reflection, I could blur it a bit, but that blurs it the same way all over the asset. But here's a cool trick. Compound blur. In this effect you can select a blur layer and in this case it will be our footage. Now, when we blur it, it will blur based on the luma values of the footage, which will blur it more or less based on the texture. And that comes in super handy in millions of cases. Trust me, once you know this, you will use it a lot. Okay, last but not least, let's also pre-comp our main 3D object. Again, I would copy the camera and light. Actually, there's no need to have it in the main comp, as it will not change the look or everything. In this way, you have light and camera options in your main comp and if you adjust one of those, all the pre-comps will adjust accordingly. And this is just a huge time saver. As a final step, we can add some pixel motion blur to our layers and we are good to go. 
So please let me know if this answered all your questions you had about the new 3D options within After Effects and if there are still open ones. Let me know in the comments and I will answer all of them. Promised. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun creating your own 3D scenes in After Effects.